Okay. When we have to deal with uh, certain models, right? It's not that all the time data is available to us. Somebody has already provided data. Sometimes we have to simulate data itself. And you need to simulate the systems. When you have to simulate the systems, we need to, you are going to make some models. The models will assume certain distributions and that distributions will be characterized by certain CDFs. And according to using those CDFs, you need to generate data, right? Now the question is how to generate data. This is we briefly discussed last time. Suppose let's say some CDF is given to you. Our model has assumed some distribution which comes with a certain CDF and we want to simulate that. Now for that, we are going to do that assuming uniform distribution. Okay, let's say I have access to uniform distribution. Now for time being assume that your f is continuous. We know that if your function, your CDF function, it is already monotone by definition or like it is by property and now it is continuous. And if it is continuous and monotone, its inverse function is well defined. It is also going to be one to one. And that is what it looks like here. The on the x axis, x can take minus infinity to plus infinity. Here y axis is 0, 1. But on the inverse map, the x axis is between 0, 1 and the y axis is between it can be minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, what I will do is we discussed functions of random variables last time. Now, what I will be looking is a function of this uniform random variable. I will apply some g function on my uniform random variable and I am going to get a new random variable. But I will not going to be using any arbitrary g function here. I will be using particular g functions which is given by this f inverse function. You know that f is given to me and I will be able to find out its f inverse and I am going to use g function as that f inverse. Now the claim is if I define apply this transformation on my uniform function the new random variable I am going to get it has a CDF of f. Why is that? Let us say I want to find CDF of my random variable x that is probability that let, it, let is x less than or equals to x but to replace x by f inverse u that is by definition right. Uh, that is what we have defined f equals to f inverse u g is f inverse u and now because f inverse is is a one to one map I can write it in this fashion probability that u is less than or f equals to u and now you can go and compute we know that u is uniform right so it will have this nature this is between 0 1 and this is 1 this is my uniform function now if you compute what is the probability and f of x, so maybe I made a little wrong here. So this is like my uniform function between 0 1. And now if you are going to ask this uniform random variable is going to take value less than or equals to f of x, somewhere f of x is here this is exactly equals to f of x okay because area under this curve is going to be 1 if you are going to look into area under this portion because the height is 1 f of x it is going to be exactly equals to f of x and now you see that the cdf of this has exactly f of x okay now how to this is nice property now the question is how to generate data as per my CDF f, right? Suppose u is your uniform, right? And somehow assume that somebody generates data according to this uniform distribution. Let us call this data as u1, u2, u3, up to let us say you have been generated 100 samples. These are actual data, data generated as per uniform distribution. Now I know this f, what I will do is on these data points, I will apply 
f inverse u1 f inverse u2 and f inverse u100 let's call this point this is my x value now that is what we have said right now this is what we are calling it as x let's call this as x1 let's call this as x2 and let's call this as x100 now we have 100 data points now these data points are coming as for they are following my cdf of f is that clear now you see that even though uniform distribution samples are coming from uniform distribution but whichever cdf f is given to you i have used that and now i have transferred these samples to new samples those new samples are now as per my required cdf now tomorrow like uh, later you will see that if you are going to call a function in python let's say generate normal samples normal i mean gaussian distribution with certain mean and variance generate 100 samples how it is going to do that it is going to do like this it is going to generate certain uniform samples and once you say gaussian it's not exactly what is the cdf of that gaussian and it will find the inverse of that and then apply that inverse function on those uniform samples and whatever the values it gets it gives you as output okay take this as your uh, gaussian samples so last time we come to this stage where we are saying that okay now what if f is not continuous and we know that f need if um, f is not continuous always the case in, when it is a discrete random variable discrete random variable will have cdf like this right and then there is a jump everywhere and jump, jump everywhere there is a discrete point is there now and how to handle that case now we, i have particularly put one example here look into this here there is a jump at this point if you look into its inverse it looks look into this but this function is not unique is this function is not well defined why is that for example let's say but i take one particular point here at this point u what is the value i should be assigning should i be assigning this value this value this value or the, which value there is ambiguity here right i need to properly define this what is that f inverse function this things did not arise when it was a continuous function but the moment it is a discrete that question arises so we need to appropriately define so that's what we said last time we are going to define in such a way that f of f inverse u is we are going to take max of f of x less than equals to u now if you define like that now you can you have basically to this point u here you have uniquely given this particular value as the value to be assigned at uh, this is what f inverse u if this is uh, just a minute if this is u then f inverse u exactly this point not any of this intermediate points so because of that your f inverse becomes well defined and now uh, you can check this uh, we said this is x then you can check that if f inverse at u is less than or equal to f this is only going to happen if u is less than or equal to f of x so with this because of this if and if only condition i can write it as if u is less than or equal to f of x and uh, this already gives me f of x okay so and this is what probability that my x is less than or equals to x so now you see that even uh, for the discontinuous case this things works okay any question on this uh, gen simulation of data as per given cdf so one obvious question that should come to your mind is 
who will give me uniform samples this is all assuming under the uh, assuming that somebody has provided uniform samples but uniform is another distribution o distribution like how we are going to generate if that is there we are saying okay everything every other distribution will be able to generate but who will provide so for that there are many different methods which we will not go into in this class something called uh, uh, these are based on some uh, congruential generators called linear congruential generator multiplicative re recursive generator some fibonacci generator and all these are based on making things very random within your machine like you take some observations and you iterate in such a way that things start becoming looking very random like see like uniform is one such things which is easy to generate uniform because in uniform everything is equally likely and there is no prior information they are putting right so when you mix certain things very iteratively right everything becomes kind of equally possible and that is why generating often uniform is easier to some extent and that's why we use them and uh, based on that we build other uh, i mean generate sample for other distributions okay fine now with this i want to switch to the next topic called as jointly distributed random variables now we will quickly run through again this fast again this is a some bunch of uh, definitions we need to go through often it's not that you have to deal with one random variable you may have to deal with bunch of random variables right for example take two coins coin 1 i am going to throw and coin 2 i am going to throw actually outcome of coin 1 is one random variable outcome of the second coin is another random variable there are two random variable i want to see jointly how they behave okay so now let's say i have this bunch of random variables x1 x2 x3 and all of them are defined on the same same sample space omega and now we are going to define something called as joint cumulative density function sorry joint cumulative distribution function which is of this random variable x now onwards notice that earlier x i was used to denote for one random variable now that x could be a vector because there that could involve more than one random variable now i am going to take like i am it, it's now this cdf is now going to not single vary, varied but it's a depends on a multiple variables earlier it was simply f of x x now it is f of x x1 x2 up to xm m here is the number of random variables you have now its definition is this joint probability probability that x1 is less than or equals to x1 and x2 is less than or equals to x2 like that all the way up to xm is less than or equals to small xm notice that this is a joint probability we are talking about now joint cdf is expressed in terms of joint probability so this example we said right suppose i toss a coin n times each outcome is like a one random variable and i may be interested in this joint probability what is the probability that the first throw give me value of 1 second throw give me a value of 0 like that and the last one give me a value of 1 this is like a joint probability i am asking and you based based on this you are going to define your cumulative density functions other thing sometimes we may have to deal with coupled things for example right now we are not saying they are dependent or independent we just want to understand the joint behavior so can we get that x1 x2 x3 up to 1 xm are independent but they are 
We are not, uh, we have not yet defined what is independence here. So far, we have defined independence of events, right? If I, we give you two events, when we say they are independent? Yeah, probability of their intersection, that is like both the events happening together is nothing but probability of, product of the probability of individual, that is the independence. But uh, what is the independence here? Yeah, not a defined it, we will define it, okay? Right now, this definition does not worry about things are dependent or independent. Okay, it is simple at this point, just take it as a joint probabilities we are defining and based on that we are defining joint cumulative density function, distribution function. Okay, now let us take for simplicity, this let us I am going to take this n equals to 2 here. Let us say I have two random variables x1 and x2. Hypothetically assume that that is representing the amount you are going to put in some stock. You, are, you have decided to put your money in two stocks, stock 1 and stock 2. In stock 1, you are going to put your amount x1 and uh, you are going to put an amount x2 in your stock. But you have a total budget of C. The amount you are going to put x1 plus x2 has to be equals to C. Right? Now, there is a constraint, right? If I increase x1, x2 has to come down. Similarly, if x2 goes up, x1 has to, both can't increase or both can't decrease if there is some has to add up. So, there is a dependency. Now, to capture this dependency, we need to define joint probabilities. Okay? So, here we know that x1 and x2, if I have to plot, it is not this entire first quarter quadrant here. It has to be something like this. The values can only lie on this line, right? So, if this is like a C and this is also C. Only the values have to lie on this point. So, there is a kind of dependency of one on the other.